Hello, we're here at Canterbury for the third ODI between England and Australia. Um, the weather's not as good as it has been for the last week or so and there is a little bit of drizzle in the air, uh, so not the sunny conditions that we had for the first couple of matches. Um, do you think that that will affect either side particularly, Sid? I'm not sure it will, although we did see that the West Indies were obviously you know, impacted by the fact that the weather was really rubbish and you know they complained about it constantly. But I also sort of feel that that was a bit of a reflection of the general way that they were feeling it and the, you know, the kind of mood in the camp that wasn't great. And when the weather reflected that, it just that's that's how they've kind of verbalised it. Mm -hmm. But I think with the Australians, I mean, these are definitely very English conditions. It's really cloudy. There's a lot of dark dark clouds and there's a little bit of drizzle as you said um, but I think these Australians professionals it's not going to bother them at all. Okay um, we haven't had an official England squad um, for the third ODI so uh, your guess is as good as ours at the moment. Um, in terms of uh, changes that England might make um, I suppose there's the obvious question mark over Sarah Taylor's match fitness after she she pulled out and she wasn't able to warm up the other day um, she was walking okay um, so, but we but we, we haven't yet heard whether she'll be able to play today uh, do you think that England are likely to make any other changes Sid? Well in, um, I think in an ideal world they wouldn't um, there are also you know, there got to be some question marks over Heather Knight who's obviously not not quite moving as smoothly as she might hope and you know Catherine Brunt though she came back onto the field the other day again you now they're, they're all three of these players are players that you really want to make sure play in the test so you know there might be thoughts about resting one of them at least but I, I'm guessing equally they absolutely definitely won't want to rest all three of them. Given that England have essentially lost both of the first two ODIs with the bats um, whilst bowling well is there perhaps an argument that they should be playing an extra batsman? Well, I think that you have to ask, you know, who you're going to drop in order to do that and who you're going to bring in, Are you, you know, and but I think there is a potential answer that England have, which is to, you know, drop, perhaps slightly unfairly, but drop Laura Marsh for Bryony Smith. Um, as we saw, you know, Bryony Smith made a, a really good contribution in that Laura Marsh role um, in the third ODI against the West Indies at Chelmsford, um, and she does offer an awful lot more with the bat than Laura Marsh does. So harsh on Laura Marsh, that w definitely, but it, that is definitely a change that England could make that would give them significantly more batting down the order. She would be able to, you know, bat in the in number seven, and that would push Catherine Brunt down one spot to perhaps watch as a better spot for her. And Bryony is the kind of player that's capable, definitely, you know, of hitting 50 runs off 30 balls, um, you know, and doing a real bang up job down the order there. OK, obviously Bryony Smith was not in the squad for the first two ODIs, but as we say, we have not had an official squad for the third ODI, so it may be that she's been called up. Um, we'll, have to, we'll have to wait and see on that one. In terms of the Australian side, um, again, a question can be asked about whether they'll make any changes. Um, they've obviously been very successful in the, in the first two matches. I suppose there's a possible question mark over Nicole Bolton, who has failed on both occasions. Um, we think that she has been actually carrying a bit of illness um, possibly uh, about of tonsillitis um, so that may explain her kind of uh, poor performance there um, so I think they're they're likely to continue with the same 11 what do you think Sid? Yeah I think again ideally they, they will do so there's a, there's a possibility that um, you know if Nicole Bolton is definitely not well they could bring in Lise Villani mm. um, you know that, that's got to be an option for them but I think that they will definitely want Nicole Bolton to play in the test and I think that you know if she's on the mend or, or better then they'll definitely want her to play here because she's the one they want in their 11. OK. Um, England have obviously lost both games. Um, I suppose let's maybe do that uh, really cliche thing of focusing on the positives. What do you think have been the positives for England out of those first two matches? Well, I think the bowling's done OK. I mean, you know, we've, we have, and the, the fielding's done OK. We've seen a couple of drop catches, and the drop catches are always the things that get the emphasis. But I think, you know, overall, if you look at, you know, 100-odd fielding incidents in each game, you know, there's been a, a couple of, you know, poor moments. But overall, 98% of it's been good. Um, you know, Nat Siver did a good job in the first ODI, and Tammy Beaumont did a, did a brilliant job in the, in the second ODI. Um, you know, it's it's not easy to you know keep your head around you when everyone else is losing theirs. As someone once said, it's certainly not easier to to bat um, and bat well when everyone else is losing their wickets around you. Um, and both Nat Siver and Tammy Beaumont have shown that you know 
they're capable of putting together those innings. Nat said in the press conference yesterday, you know, you know, we're kind of, you know, we're one notch away from, I don't think quite the phrase she used, but something like we're one notch away from a decent performance. I'm not sure it's quite one, maybe two or three, but I think that, you know, the, the England, you know, the roots are there for a decent performance. I know that your feeling about the first game was very much that it wasn't ever particularly close. I personally think that England will be cross um, and can feel frustrated that they haven't won either of those games, which they could they could well have won. And particularly in the in the second ODI, if they'd had at least Perry early with that um, possible slightly possibly slightly questionable decision um, about uh, whether she got her foot back behind the line or whether she should have been given out stumped. Um, I think that England can consider themselves really unlucky and if they had if Australia had ended up three wickets down early on then they could well have been in a lot more trouble than they ultimately were in the end um, so yeah I think there's um, definitely scope for England to to pull it back today um, is this a must win for England do you think Sid? Well mathematically um, it obviously definitely isn't um, so the math says that England can lose this and still win the Ashes but the maths also says that if they lose this, they have to win the test and one, two, three, count them, T20s against this Australia side. That feels like a long shot. What do you think, Raf? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think England need to get some points on the board today um, if they're to have any chance of, of winning back the Ashes. Otherwise, yeah, it's going to be a really big uphill struggle. Um, but yeah, we'll be bringing you all the action from Canterbury and we'll obviously be hoping that England can get some points on the board.